So I'll begin the story from 45,000 years ago. This is when humans first started expressing their need for storytelling. Or it might have been even before that, but this is what has survived, right? We see cave paintings, we see carvings, we see, uh, we see marks, symbols. We see them all over the world. And 3,500 years ago, humans felt the need to write things. For example, they started keeping account of malt and barley. They even had accounts of how much beer was allocated to different people. Somebody even wrote a love poem 2,000 years ago. Why am I telling you this? Telling stories, sharing things, wanting to pass things from generation to generation is an innate need. And storytelling comes naturally to us. Everybody is a storyteller. Why is that? Let us look at some of the things that we do. Some of the things that uh, we just do. For example, we live in communities of thousands of people, millions of people with property. We tell from generation to generation that you belong to this place or you own this property. Now, there is a building and somebody is the owner of this building. And then the next generation comes and this is passed on. This is just a story. If somebody forgets to pass on, somebody forgets to record it, it is not going to be the same in the next generation. The next generation would not know if this belonged to their family or anything. This whole idea of owning properties and all is a grand story that we tell each other and we all agree to believe it. Now, living in communities, there is another major enabler. This enabler is called money. Now, imagine I give you a piece of paper and I tell you this has value and you agree that it has value and you give me something in return that is actually of value, like food that I can eat, a vehicle that I can travel in. Now, this whole concept of money is imagined. We all agree to imagine it. We all agree to the same story. You tell me this money has this value. Some authoritative organization tells that this money has this value. We all agree to it. Even more, we have countries. I'm from India. Somebody is from Lebanon. Somebody is from Saudi Arabia. Somebody is from Egypt. The birds that fly across continents, do they know that? Somebody probably didn't tell them the story that we are all different nations and different ethnic groups and all that. So these are also grand stories that we all agree to accept. Everybody is a good storyteller. So every day we are telling stories, we are believing stories, and we are reacting and responding to stories. We are living in stories. What does storytelling actually do? A bond is created between the storyteller and the listener. That's what happens when a story is told. Not only is a bond created, there is emotional investment that happens. Like I tell you a story, you might feel something. You tell me something, I feel something. And this emotional investment can also translate into physiological reactions. Like you act, something actually happens to your body. Let's take for example, you're just sitting in a movie theater. You're not even moving, but somebody on the screen is running and jumping off a cliff and your heart pops out. What is this called? Why do you do this? Doesn't it sound silly? Somebody has something nice going on in their life and they are on the screen, but you look at them and you feel happy for them. Even better, you know that both of them in the screen are acting. They have told you they are acting, the whole world knows. And they are acting as if they are in love and then when they break up, you cry. How ridiculous is that? What are you doing? So what you are doing is you are empathizing. You are putting yourself in their shoes and trying to feel what they feel. You are empathizing. Research says that whatever brain activity or emotional cycle the storyteller goes through, the listener also emulates the same. They also go through something similar. This is valuable information. So this gives us insight into how it works. What really happens? What really happens? Hormones are at work. Let's experiment. So here I'll try and use the poll option. Let us see how it works. A beautiful sound is coming from inside this room. We go and try to see what's inside. Just as we are about to peep in and find out from where this beautiful music comes. 
Now my question to you is, what were you doing or what were you feeling or what were you going through when I showed that clip and narrated this, when I narrated this small uh, story? Waiting and expecting. You were waiting and expecting. That is dopamine at work. This is a hormone that is at work. So what it does, it creates a bond between you and me. I was leading you. I was telling you there is something coming. There is something out there. And you just followed me. That is dopamine at work. This boy, will he climb this and open the tap? Come on. Let's see. Let's see. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Will you? Will you? Will you? Will you? Oh, yes, you did. Oh, yes, he did it. Now, that was a dopamine release when he did it. There was a small tension that was built up and then he did it and we had a dopamine release, a small pleasure. What is this child doing? What is this child doing? Oh, the alphabet. She's stuck after K, L, okay, M. She's doubtful about M. Now it's helpful. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. What were you doing this time? Now answer question two in the poll. You were empathizing with this child. That is oxytocin at work. You, fe you feel more human. When you are empathizing, you feel more human. You trust me. We share a feeling. Like I was narrating something. You could relate to that. And we shared a feeling. Look at this. This monkey and dog are playing. You see that? And a dog playing. I have never seen this. I've seen a dog chase away monkeys. <laughs> Monkey is biting the dog. Biting a dog. What? Now what were you doing? What were you feeling? Answer question three in the poll. You were relaxing, smiling or laughing. Like you, you, you might not have laughed out loud because you have the residual effect of the previous story that you heard. You might have just relaxed a bit compared to what you saw before. Now this is endorphins at work. You are relaxed, but you are focused. This is a good time for me to tell you something, make you listen to something I have to say. Waiting and expecting, empathizing, laughing. Now these are all, this is not an exhaustive list of all that you go through in a story. This is just a small sample. So what you go through in a story can be like this. Now, whom do you wait for? Whom do you expect something from? Whom do you empathize with? Whom do you laugh with? Just imagine somebody you would comfortably laugh with, somebody you would wait for, somebody you would empathize. The keyword here or the crux here is trust. You would do all this only with people you trust. Now, when you listen to a story, you build trust on the storyteller. This happens to you. You have no choice. This is human behavior. This is natural human behavior. While listening to a story, you develop trust on the storyteller. That is why we trust our teachers. Now, by telling stories, we are affecting trust. Now, that is big responsibility. By telling stories, we are affecting trust. Now, what is the role of trust in the social sector? We are all working in the social sector. So what is the role of trust here? We want our communities to trust us. We want the government to trust us. We want families, our own families and the families of the people we work with to trust us. We want children to trust us. We want donors. We want partners. We want volunteers to trust us. Now, we have a tool or we have an art that can really affect trust in a positive way. How do we keep the trust? Now, this might sound like a moral lesson, but this we have to cross over this because it is always safe and good to have the basics in place. We remain fair when we tell a story. We remain honest when we tell a story and we remain reliable when we tell a story. We don't exaggerate or we don't pick out things out of context just to suit our narrative. We don't do that. Maybe if we do that, we get to tell a story once. Because we, once we lose trust, we are not going to be able to tell another story. Most importantly, we respect the dignity of all the stakeholders involved, especially the ones about whom we make the stories. Now, what do we do with this trust? Now, telling stories can bring out trust and it can uh, have a, a very nice relationship between the storyteller and the listener. What, what do we do with this trust? We sharpen the cognitive empathy of all stakeholders involved. 
Now, what is cognitive empathy? Cognitive empathy is your ability to put yourselves in somebody else's shoes and understand, think, imagine how it is for them. It is a little different from actually feeling and crying for them. Like you're not going through the same emotions as them. You're not uh, experiencing the same emotions of them and stepping out. You are actually understanding what emotions or mental state they are in. You actually understand. That is what we can use storytelling for effectively. And how do we do this? There are a few best practices or a few things I have picked up along the way. This is not an exhaustive list. There might be more, but I would like to mention these from where one can start picking up. Make me care. Now, when I say me, I mean both the storyteller and the listener, because unless the storyteller cares, the listener is not going to feel it. We saw that research shows what the storyteller goes through. The listener also goes through something similar. So it is important that there is genuine care on the side of the storyteller for a story to be translated well to a listener. You don't have to be clever. Like you don't, we don't need smart tactics. We don't need smart uh, or we don't need anything clever to tell a good story. We just need the listener to feel connected. The simpler the story, the grounded the story, the better. Respect for those whose story you are telling. So that respect will reflect in this story. Like when you show it back to them, you will know whether they respect you for making the story or they feel used and violated for, make, for uh, the way you have made the story. That is very important in the sense, it is important to protect and preserve the dignity and privacy of the people that we tell the story, of, about whom we tell stories. It will reflect in the story. We want to evoke empathy or we want people to empathize. The goal here is not sympathy. Closely associated with this is the next point. We aim to inform and inspire, not instigate and agitate. We aim to inform and inspire. So this agitation and instigation, what, it, what kind of reactions does it evoke from the listener? They become irritable, they become uncomfortable, they become critical, they become uncreative. You do not want somebody to take an action when they are in this state of mind. Do not trigger cortisol. That's the, that's the stress hormone that is triggered when you go through something unpleasant. So that is what happens when you try to trigger sympathy or when you try to show something uh, hurtful or when you try to make the person guilty or anything. Here, what we are trying to do is empathize, is to make the listener empathize. So there, this tactics will not work. This might work in movies because you have paid for the ticket you are sitting there you have paid somebody to take you through an emotional experience so such scenes and responses may work well in movies in the theater but when you want to tell a genuine story of somebody and you want somebody else to empathize with it these may not work by telling stories we are affecting trust and we cannot tell a story of social impact all alone we need collaborators a lot of collaborators this we will show you through a uh, story that we have made, we'll show you the number of collaborators we have worked with. So when you have to work with a collaborator, they work well when inspired. You cannot force a story out of somebody in the sense you cannot force a, an honest story out of somebody. They work well when inspired and they work well when trust is established. Now we have talked about how we keep the trust. Collaborators in the social sector. Now, when you want to tell a story, the story is in the community, in the people that we actually want to work with. We need to have immense respect for them. And if we want to work with them and we want them to tell us a story, what we need there is trust big time or else we are only going to be outsiders telling stories that suit that we think is right. Like we assume from our reading, from our uh, internet research and all. But that need not be the reality when we want to tell a story that is actually the truth. Okay, let us listen to a story. I will stop sharing for a moment and play a video. And then we'll pause and then we'll watch another video. Both of these will be in different tones. They will be 
um, showcasing different stories. And then I have a few tips to share at the end. In the Giridi district of Jharkhand, close to the border of Bihar, in this beautiful landscape rich with minerals, just outside the forest, is a school. We see beautiful children trotting to this school. The villages around here are home to the Santal people. These children are yet to learn about their rich history. Located in the wilderness bordering the forest, this school has a shortage of teachers. It is here that E. Vidya Loka, with the support of LTI Mindtree and Samajik Parivartan Sanstha, has set up the digital classroom. Teachers from different locations teach these children in the regional language using the two-way interactive classroom. They are all volunteers who do this out of passion. COVID has taken a lot of time frame from these kids. So when we started teaching these kids, we had to improvise the uh, curriculum according to their uh, stand, where they are with regard to understanding. Digital class is a good thing. It 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 is a good thing. To manage this classroom, we have a class assistant. Madan Hembrom is a resident of Ganjwa Paisra. He's been trained and employed to operate Evidya Loka's digital classroom. This employment makes him a very respected man in his village. When we walked into the village, to meet parents of our students, we found the village empty. Madan told us he would take us to where the parents would be at work. We expected him to walk towards the tar road, but he led us along a trail. We came across a brick kiln. The parents here refused to speak with us, fearing their malik. Sadly, not all of them were adults. The other occupation here is mining for mica.
or abandoned mine. Hmm. All that glitters here is not gold. It's mica. Finally found the people we were looking for. ᱱᱚᱣᱟ <laughs> अरे खुशी मना ले आज के आले रेन गिदर को पढा कना आपे द्वारा बोले नोडे ऑनलाइन क्लास जो चला कना अडी खुशी मना लिया जे काले रेन गिदर को ले लेकना पापा ओन का ऑनलाइन क्लास होता है तो ये आले बाले बड़ा कना ऑनलाइन क्लास ही कोमता गिदर को ले ले या ओनाते अडी खुशी मना ले बोले निंके कते आले जिंदगी ले बितोदा आदो आले निंके ले कमी दा नोडे जे के आले नीतमान वा नमो करनाते नवाले लायदा गा पहले बा नमो ओनाते ᱜᱟᱞᱮᱱ ᱜᱤᱫᱽᱨᱟᱹ ᱡᱮᱢᱚᱱ ᱢᱚᱡᱽ ᱛᱮᱠᱚ ᱯᱟᱲᱦᱟᱜ ᱟᱨ ᱢᱚᱡᱽ ᱛᱮᱠᱚ ᱯᱟᱲᱦᱟᱣ ᱞᱮᱱᱠᱷᱟᱡ ᱡᱮᱢᱚᱱ ᱚᱱᱠᱟ ᱱᱚᱢᱵᱚᱨ ᱟᱞᱚ ᱦᱮᱡ ᱠᱚᱣᱟ ᱡᱮᱢᱚᱱ ᱩᱱᱠᱩ ᱦᱚᱸ ᱰᱷᱤᱵᱨᱟᱹ ᱞᱟᱜᱟᱣ ᱦᱩᱭᱩᱜ ᱛᱟᱠᱚᱣᱟ ᱢᱮᱱᱛᱮ ᱵᱚᱞᱮ ᱚᱱᱟ ᱵᱩᱫᱽᱫᱷᱤ ᱯᱮ ᱮᱢᱟᱣ ᱞᱮᱠᱷᱟᱡ ᱵᱚᱞᱮ ᱡᱟᱦᱟᱱᱟᱜ ᱟᱯᱮ ᱦᱚᱸ ᱡᱮᱢᱚᱱ ᱚᱱᱟ ᱠᱚ ᱠᱟᱹᱢᱤ ᱠᱟᱛᱮᱫ ᱯᱮ ᱟᱹᱥᱩᱞᱚᱜ ᱛᱟᱵᱚᱱᱟ ᱟᱨ ᱟᱯᱮ ᱦᱚᱸ ᱡᱮᱢᱚᱱ 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 ᱟᱯᱮ ᱦᱚ
particular uh, uh, style of uh, narrating it. Let us look at another one that is slightly different from it. And then we'll talk about a few tips. Surrounded by all this wheat that is about to be harvested, is a school that is sowing the seeds of tomorrow. यह विद्यालय वास्तव में दुर्गम क्षेत्र में है और दुर्गम क्षेत्र में स्थित होने के नाते यहाँ की भौगोलिक परिस्थितियाँ भी कुछ दूसरे तरह की हैं बहुत विषम परिस्थितियाँ हैं विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ एल टी आई माइंड ट्री एन आर ओही ट्रस्ट द ई विद्यालयों का डिजिटल क्लासरूम प्रोग्राम इज डेलीवर्ड हियर वॉलंटियर टीचर्स फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब टीच इन द रीजनल लैंग्वेज यूजिंग दिस टू वे इंटरक्टिव क्लासरूम हम लोगों ने इतना बड़ा दुख और दर्द झेला कोविड 19 का उस दौरान दो वर्ष का जो लर्निंग लॉस हुआ और हम सरकारी विद्यालयों में अध्यापकों की कमी रही जैसे हमारे विद्यालय में तीन चार साल से जो है गणित अध्यापक नहीं है सामाजिक विज्ञान के अध्यापक नहीं थे अंग्रेजी के अध्यापक नहीं थे और ऐसी स्थिति में आरोही संस्था ने ई विद्यालोका के माध्यम से जो कार्य किया और यहाँ पर किसी को नियुक्त किया वो निश्चित रूप से हम लोगों के लिए इन बच्चों के लिए एक बहुत बड़ा वरदान साबित हुआ डिजिटल क्लास से हमें बहुत फायदा होता है जिससे हमें नई नई चीज़ें देखने को और सीखने को मिली और हमें साइंस की क्लास भी पढ़ने को मिली जिनका नाम श्रीमती आरुषि मैम था और वो हमें बहुत अच्छे से समझाती हैं पढ़ाती हैं The class assistant acts as the extended arm of the volunteer teacher. They are trained and employed to operate the digital infrastructure. Pinky Chand, class assistant at Biria Majola, has been instrumental in making students attend online classes from villages near and far. यहाँ एक गांव है दुगाड़ी गोट वहाँ पर बिजली नहीं है उनके पास मोबाइल नहीं है अब वहां के बच्चे रात में कैसे पढ़ें? A couple of students volunteered to take us to their residence in Dugadi Goat. A car could only take us half the way. The rest we had to cover by foot. क्या क्या जानवर है शेर हाथी सुगर भालू और नीला ये एक नदी है जब बारिश का समय होता है यानी चातुर्मास इसको पहाड़ी में कहते हैं उसमें अगर थोड़ी सी भी बारिश होती है या पहाड़ों पर पानी गिरता है तो फिर उसके बाद ये नदी जो आप देख रहे हैं सौ डेढ़ सौ मीटर के आसपास की चौड़ाई है इसकी और इसमें कमर तक इतना पानी होता है और हमारे बच्चों का घर आप देख सकते हैं कहा है आपके घर
कहा है घर कहा है घर दैट इज द वॉक बैक होम बरसात के समय में कुछ ऐसा हो जाते हैं जैसे कुछ बच्चे पार हो गए तो कुछ बच्चे घर से निकल रहे हैं वहाँ वाले तो बच्चे चले गए इधर वाले तो फिर उनको वापस आ गए तेज हो गई पहाड़ का पानी आ गया पूरा पानी भर गया हाँ सब हाथी का खतरा ही है शेर का खतरा ही है भालू का खतरा ही है जंगली तो है हर जानवर का खतरा ही है यहाँ बिल्कुल बिजली ही नहीं है हमारी स्वरूप जाए ये भी मतलब किसी के जलते हैं कि किसी की नहीं जलती खराब ये ये सोलर सोलर मोमबत्ती जला के खाना बनाना पड़ता है अब बच्चों हम कहते हैं कि बेटा ये देखो आपको बताइए यहाँ कितनी स्थिति में हो कि आगे बढ़ने की कोशिश करो बच्चों से हम यही कहते हैं कि अपनी लाइफ के बारे में सोचो हर किसी के माँ बाप कहते हैं हम भी कहते हैं बच्चों से क्या बच्चों तुम स्कूल जाते हो तो कुछ ध्यान दिया करो अब आज का समय भी जरूरी है पढ़ाई लिखाई तो मेन चीज है आज का इस जंगल को पार करके यहाँ से जाते हैं तीन साढ़े तीन किलोमीटर हमारा विद्यालय पड़ता है फिर भी जो समय बच्चों को मिलता है और जब विद्यालय में आते हैं तो ये ऑनलाइन शिक्षण के द्वारा इनका वास्तव में समग्र विकास होता है we listen to two stories now i have some tips let's just say uh, tips these are uh, not absolute things but something that i would like to tell somebody who wants to make something like this great stories are inherently visual this is because even when we read text or when we listen to somebody we are creating images in our head and we are having a dialogue when when the character in the video says something we respond in our head we actually do that and these are all visual we fill the descriptions with images that we know so visual storytelling is a good idea if you have to do it do it this way and avoid talking about non essentials like for example in these videos there were a number of things that we could have uh, a lot of information that was there just loading them up will not will only disturb the story that is one thing and there are some tips that are applicable only to social sector uh, videos i'll just uh, elaborate on them do not prepare too much to get a story do not go with a story in mind when you talk to somebody or when you listen to the people you want to work with it is better to have um what do you say you, you you might want to look for something like based on your requirement you know what you're looking for But at the same time, I say you do not know what you will find. You you will be surprised what you find. You will be surprised how cooperative people are, or sometimes non-cooperative people are. But still, you will always find a mix of these. Uh, when you are not too prepared, when you have an open mind, open eyes, and open ears, you find these stories coming from directions other than the ones you had planned. also do not always declare the moral of the story for example it's very easy to find faults or point somebody in truth we do not know what factors have contributed to a problem we are solving we do not know if we if we go back to the history the geography the politics the other uh, abstract things that are there we will not really be able to pinpoint a moral to the story so it is better to not point out a moral to the story in most cases but again there are exceptions a story that can show the before and after of something is very good in the sense what happened before an effort was made and what happened after an effort was made that story can really show 
the the results and that can help one scale up or help us convince somebody with the story so summarizing what i have been trying to tell we'll tell an honest story we make the listener empathize of course we respect the people we are telling about whom we are telling the story and then the listeners we inspire them to take action happy storytelling <laughs> <laughs>